Every day, you're striving to maximize your productivity, trying to be the best version of yourself. Yet, despite your best efforts, it feels like something's always dragging you down. What if the biggest obstacles to your productivity were hiding in your own mind? Hi everyone, I am the Productivity Doctor, an orthopedic resident who went from a struggling student to graduating with honors. Today, I'll expose the top five mental traps that are secretly sabotaging your efforts. Are you ready to challenge your own mind? Let's get into it. Trap number one, the self-shame trap. Imagine waking up one morning and realizing you've slept past your alarm. As the day goes on, you notice you haven't finished the chapter you planned to, and you start beating yourself up for not meeting your own high standards. This is the self-shame trap in action. The root problem lies in how we set our expectations. Since you're here watching this video, you're probably into improving yourself and staying productive. That's awesome. But it comes with a tricky side. You may set the bar too high. Don't get me wrong. We should all hold ourselves to a high standard. But do we really need perfection, even if we know deep down that we will never achieve it? Missing these lofty goals can leave you feeling ashamed, not necessarily because you didn't do well, but because the target was way off to begin with. On top of that, we live in a hyper-competitive society. It's so easy to look around, compare yourself to others, and always find someone who seems to be doing better, making you feel less than enough. This is the core of the self-shame trap. So, how do we escape this mental trap? The answer is surprisingly simple self-compassion. A study conducted in 2018 involved more than 200 students explored how self-forgiveness affects procrastination. The research found that students who forgave themselves for procrastinating experienced fewer negative emotions like shame and were less likely to procrastinate in the future. So, basically forgiving yourself for not being productive actually helps you become more productive. So, We've just tackled the tricky self-shame trap. Nice work, but hang tight, there's more ahead. We're going to look at another common mental trap that might be slowing you down without you even realizing it. Trap number two, the overcommitment trap. We've all been there, saying yes to too many things, from work projects to social outings. However, if we take on too much, we end up spreading ourselves too thin and not having enough time for what truly matters. Often it's tough to say no because we don't want to disappoint others or come off as lazy. And then there's another big issue. There is the fear of missing out. What if hanging out with friends next time ends up being an epic adventure you'll never forget? This fear, commonly known as FOMO, can lead us to take on more than we can manage. A revealing study conducted by Rosgenjuk in 2020 looked into how FOMO impacts our lives, especially in our social media habits. He found that people with high FOMO are more likely to frequently check platforms like Facebook and Instagram, which not only eats into their productivity, but also negatively affects their daily routines. The study also pointed out that FOMO can lead to issues like excessive internet and smartphone use. Whether it's accepting too many fun invitations or taking on excessive work, both scenarios spread us too thin. We end up sacrificing quality in one area to meet demands in another. So, how do we break free from this mental trap? Effective prioritization. Ever noticed how some of your efforts seem to have a huge impact while others barely make a difference? This is what the Pareto Principle is all about. It suggests that roughly 20% of our actions generate 80% of our results. This ratio might not always hold exactly true for everything you do, but the general idea remains consistent. A small part of what you do contributes the most to your success. So, when deciding how to use your time, think about which activities really push you towards your goals and focus on those. And here's a piece of advice from someone who's been there. Be careful not to overload yourself with work. During my days in med school, I was incredibly focused on getting the best grades. I spent countless hours studying, often sacrificing leisure and time with friends. Looking back, while my dedication helped me academically, it came at a significant personal cost. Now as an orthopedic resident, 
I realized that no one at the hospital is interested in my grades for med school. They're more concerned with my skills and my work ethic. So, trust me when I say that relentlessly chasing perfection might seem important now, but it's not worth missing out on the rich experiences life has to offer. Balancing your efforts is key. Strive for excellence, but not at the expense of everything else in your life. Understanding how to say no is just the first step in mastering your time. But what happens when everything seems urgent? Trap number three, the urgency trap. When everything seems urgent, you might feel like you're being highly productive, but in reality, you're mistaking busyness with true productivity. A big reason we fall into this trap is due to a reactive work style. If you're constantly checking and responding to emails, messages, and other notifications, you're in reactive mode. This means you're letting these interruptions dictate your schedule, which can end up taking over your day and leaving little room for the work that actually matters. Recognizing this trap is the first step to getting out of it. Here's what sets urgent tasks apart from the truly important ones. Urgent tasks demand your immediate attention, but don't necessarily help you achieve your long-term goals. Important tasks, on the other hand, are those that pave the way to your goals, even if they aren't pressing right now. For example, let's say you're preparing for an upcoming exam and you remember you haven't done your laundry. Sure, having clean clothes feels urgent, but acing your exam will impact your future much more significantly. In this case, focusing on your studies is clearly more important than a laundry run. To truly focus on what's important, Try setting up deep work sessions. This means setting aside specific times during your day, maybe an hour or two, where you focus solely on significant tasks without any interruptions. To make the most of your sessions, create a dedicated workspace free from distractions. Turn off your notifications and make it clear to those around you that you're not to be disturbed. This dedicated time is your opportunity to dive deep into projects that matter and produce your best work. One hour of deep work is worth way more than four hours of distracted work. Now that we've mastered the urgency trap, let's talk about another subtle but equally disruptive mental trap that might be slowing you down even more. Trap number four, fear of failure trap. Fear of failure is a major roadblock. It can freeze you in place, keeping you from pursuing your dreams. A lot of this fear comes from something called the spotlight effect. Ever feel like everyone's watching your every move, waiting for a mistake? That's the spotlight effect in action. Believing that the world is scrutinizing you can make the thought of failing seem much more terrifying than it really is. Think about the last time you were in class and someone answered a question incorrectly. Did you dwell on their mistake for the rest of the day? Chances are, you probably forgot about it as soon as class ended. Just like you're not cataloging every small slip up of the people around you, they're not fixated on yours. This is truly liberating. It proves that the intense spotlight you feel on yourself is mostly in your head. But here's the tough part about the spotlight effect. It makes you feel like you need to be perfect all the time just to avoid getting criticized. This push to always be flawless because you think everyone's judging you can really mess with your head. It creates a vicious cycle where you're so focused on not making mistakes that it actually gets in the way of getting stuff done. When you let this fear of judgment team up with the need to be perfect, it can really knock your productivity sideways. You end up spending all of your energy dodging errors and might not get much done at all. So, how can you overcome this mental trap? First up, Let's get real for a moment. Most people are simply too caught up in their own lives to pay much attention to your mistakes. Apart from your family and a few close friends, it's unlikely that anyone is taking the time to scrutinize your every action or every slip up. And remember, those who do notice are usually the ones who genuinely care about you and want the best for you. Now, for the next step, develop a growth mindset. This is a powerful way to turn your fear of failure into a tool for self-improvement. Carol Dweck, author of the book Mindset, explains it perfectly. In a growth mindset, challenges are exciting rather than threatening. So rather than thinking, oh, I'm going to reveal my weaknesses, you say, wow, here's a chance to grow. Sure, shifting your perspective like this isn't an overnight process. I get it. 
but it's worth the effort. Now that we've tackled how to shift our mindset, let's move on to the final mental trap of this video. Trap number five, liminal moments trap. So what exactly is a liminal moment? Think of it as a between moment. It happens when you're transitioning from one activity to another. Imagine you just finished a math assignment and are about to start studying for a history test, or you're switching from homework to dinner. These are times when you might feel tempted to take a quick break to check your phone or watch a YouTube video. However, here's the catch. These breaks can unexpectedly stretch much longer than planned. These moments are tricky. A supposed five minute break can easily spiral into much longer if you're not careful. One solution to this mental trap is to add structure to your breaks. Let's say you're setting up a plan for how to study. Instead of just taking breaks whenever you feel like it, you decide in advance when you'll pause and for how long. This is called a structured break. A simple method to do this is using the famous Pomodoro technique. Here's how it works. If you work for 25 minutes straight, then take a five minute break and repeat. This helps keep breaks short and sweet, so you don't end up accidentally taking a half hour break when you meant to take five minutes. Another effective strategy is to create environmental cues that signal when it's time to focus and when it's okay to relax. Treat your study area like a stage set for a play where everything has a purpose. You can set up signals that help you know it's work time or break time. For example, you might use a lamp that you turn on only when it's time to hit the books, or play a specific playlist that you can only listen to while studying. These cues condition your brain to switch into work mode or wind down during breaks, helping you maintain a productive rhythm throughout your study sessions. That's a wrap for this video. Thanks for sticking with me until the end. If you found these strategies useful, please leave a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more productivity insights. Now, I'm curious. Out of all the traps we covered today, which one do you find yourself falling into the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear your experiences. And hey, if you're serious about breaking the procrastination habit for good, make sure to catch this video next. See you there.